you could kick, you could low punch, and you could high punch, and uh, that was basically it. So that was what you did, some punches here and some kicks there, and when you were, you were done, you would send an, uh, an attack an invite to a friend, saying, Hey Morten, I'll kick your ass in Prügelpause. <laughs> um, so if you sign up, uh, I have a fight ready for you, and uh, hopefully you would sign up, and you would join uh, the, the, the game, and you would make your different moves, and when you were done, you could press, press go, and you'll see the actual fight. And maybe I won, maybe you won. It didn't really matter. Well, after around a couple of months, we had uh, 4,000 uh, sign-ups per day, which was okay. It was back in 2000, so not that many internet users, but I felt that we could do better. And suddenly it dawned to me that if we kind of change the process, instead of asking, if I invited you more and said, well, do you want to join the fight? Register here. Instead of that, say, Morten, I want to I wanna fight you. Come up and make your moves. You went directly to the website and you made your moves. You spent maybe one minute thinking about, well, this is stupid, but okay, I'll make some moves. We had some very nice graphics, very nice uh, characters. And it would say, do you want to see who won? Well, obviously, we spend a minute doing this shit, so uh, <laughs> then sign up. So we just changed the, that little process. Instead of asking you to sign up first and make your moves, we made, you could make the moves right now. And when you wanted to see kind of what came out of this waste of time, you had to <laughs> sign up. And in one week, we went from uh, 4,000 sign-ups per day to 40,000 sign-ups per day. Uh, which was uh, pretty cool. Uh, as far as I remember, I saw Jakob Willem somewhere down there. How many players total after two years? Was it 10 million? 8 million? Uh, well, there's a, a few three million in Germany at least. Yeah. That, that, that at least I remember. Three million in, uh, in Germany. I believe our best month was uh, about 500,000 sign-ups uh, throughout 11 countries. And total after two years, about 25,000 sign-ups. Yeah, it was actually featured on German television by the most famous German boxer, which I don't know who is, because I don't like sports, and particularly not German boxers. <laughs> he was actually <laughs> fighting online. Uh, so we had Brügelpause coffee box and Brügelpause bath towels. So that was very fun. <coughs> so anyway, uh, the, the lesson learned was try to engage the use as fast as possible. You might not know that, but if you're a smoker, they put stuff in there. So when you kind of take a... I don't know, like draw, sip, drag. whatever, drag, exactly. Uh, the faster it gets into your system, you get that, <sighs> the more addicted you'll be. And it's the same on the internet. The faster you can take them, the user from, I don't know what the hell is going on, to, hey, this is pretty cool. I mean, the easier it is, the more will sign up, actually. So that was, that was lesson number one. The second one is, uh, I think it's from 2006, a company I co-founded called Spamfire, and, uh, we're doing pretty well. Um, after I think uh, six to twelve months, we had a thousand signups, uh, 900,000 signups a day, and uh, we're doing five hundred thousand uh, Danish krona in revenue per month, and uh, it was okay. And uh, but but it told me there must be something we can do better than this. I thought about burger pause, uh, bike club, whatever, and. Not that I got the inspiration or the solution from there, but I have this feeling that you can always find something little, li a little, little thing that will probably make your company five to ten times higher in revenue. So um, anyway, Spanifada worked like that, that you installed it on your Outlook, Outlook Express, which was the dominant uh, mail product back then, and um, our filter worked like that. You got a mail. We uh, asked the server, do you recognize this as spam? If you recognized it, we took it away. If you didn't recognize the user got it. If it was spam, they could kind of uh, press uh, uh, block, and it was reported to the server. If enough other users reported the same mail, it was taken out of the whole system. And it also was blocked for, for everybody. To protect you from false positive, we whitelisted all your contacts. So we imported your contact list from your computer up into the, the, the uh, application. And we whitelisted all your contacts. So if one of your friends emailed you a spam picture, or whatever, you'll get it anyway. Which was okay. And suddenly dawned on me after spending three weeks thinking, because I thought there must be something we can do. And suddenly dawned on me, if we, and 
I'm an asshole, I know that. Um, <laughs> uh, and you will think that too afterwards. Um, I thought, well, if I whitelist all my friends, why wouldn't I ask them to whitelist me? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I just whitelisted two, three, five, six hundred people. Why not send them an email and ask them, don't you want to whitelist me? So we, we did that. So next time users logged on, was a little pop-up saying, hi, you whitelisted all your friends. Why not ask them to uh, whitelist you so that they'll get your secure communication? I said, oh, okay. The next was kind of a standard email you could change in any way. Said, it, dear Morten, uh, I have started to use Spam Fighter, which is a pretty cool uh, tool to filter spam. I've whitelisted you so our communication will be safe. If you have a spam filter, you can whitelist me too. I'll appreciate that. If you don't have a spam filter, I can, I can recommend you the free spam filter, Spam Fighter. Blah, 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 blah. You, you, I think you can get the drill. Um, <laughs> And after that, we showed the whole friends list, all ticked up. Do you want to send this mail to all your friends? You could uncheck those you didn't want to invite, but who would do that? And next, ding. Um, that was pretty, um, after two days, instead of 1,000 signups per day, we had 10,000 signups per day, and revenue climbed from 500,000 to 5 million in one month. Um, that was pretty, pretty impressive. One thing though, we had to change the thing a little bit because I, I'll get back to that. We changed a little bit so before you press send, you had to type your name to make sure you really knew what you were doing. <laughs> because what happened after a week was we got a call from Microsoft in the States saying, What the fuck are you doing? I said, In what sense? Well, we got a call. <laughs> we, got a, we got a call, and this is, this is a true story. We got a call from the US Navy base on Hawaii, which is the, the center of the space warfare, uh, <laughs> the, the American space warfare program. They have a problem. So, yeah. Uh, well, it's one radar operator had installed our software inside <laughs> their system, which was communicating with our daily server. It was ludicrous. Um, which he was not allowed to do, obviously, inside the firewalls and everything. And what it did was inviting everybody in the naval base to join Spanish Fire. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he was not too happy. He sent us a mail a month afterwards uh, saying how much he hated us. He was degraded. Uh, <laughs> he got a new job, uh, probably cleaning the toilets in the naval base or a zoo somewhere uh, close on. So. Uh, then we changed it because uh, it worked a little too, little too effective. And uh, yeah, we talked to a Danish football ombudsman. He was not too happy about it. But we say, sue our ass. Uh, and he never did. Because he could see that the actual user was actually sending it. We didn't do it. I mean, they put the press uh, the, the send button. We didn't do it. Uh, we just made the tool. Then you could say, Microsoft is a spam with Outlook, right? Or Gmail. So he couldn't do anything. So that's how we uh, tend to. Tend to Tim doubled our revenue with uh, maybe not a couple of hours of work, but let's say a week. Yeah, so the last thing, the next three weeks, I'm the CEO of a company called um, Dinero, which is a cloud-based uh, accounting software. And uh, the next three weeks, uh, I'll go to Florida with my family and I'll spend the next uh, at least two to three hours every day on the beach and I'll walk around and think how the hell I'm going to from 100 sign-ups a day to two, three, 400 sign-ups a day. Because one lesson here is there's always something you can do in your company. I mean, it's not if you can, you can do the same thing as we've done several times. I've done, I, I could be here for an hour telling you all the, the stories about that, but then you'll go home and be very depressed. But uh, <laughs> uh, don't think that you can't do it. You can't do it. It's, it's hard. It's not something you come up with. Uh, you have to drink a lot of beer, uh, maybe <laughs> smoke some pot, and spend at least two, three uh, weeks uh, wandering around, really think hard about it. But suddenly, it's there, and uh, your company will actually take off. I don't know if this was growth hack and whatever, but uh, <laughs> you haven't kicked me out yet, so thank you very much. <laughs>